a fucking cop. There's no way you get away with this. Thanks for the advice. I'm gonna take my chances. You tell that bitch, Carrie, I said, what up? What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about the Tahara's, especially how Monet left another traceable clue that can implicate she and Diana in a murder case, and how she will conclude on Lorenzo killing Z. I'll also be talking about Sachs and how Jenny lied to Blanca, Angela's nephew now with the DEA, and Lawrence Ridge and everything in episode 4. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you have already subscribed, thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topics. So to begin with, Stars did a post ahead of episode 4 concerning Dana and Withman's meeting that fans should drop their theories. So I quickly dropped theory in the comment section that they will make Whitman believe Diana is willing to betray her mother and family only for him to fall in their trap. I woke up this morning and someone sent me a message that exactly what I left in the comment section happened in the episode 4. To no surprise, it did happen. I also had a feeling Monet would go into the plan with her emotions and mess up the plan. Now that I was right about too. I'll be talking about the consequences of her actions to change the initial plans. One thing we should know about the power universe is that things that are seem to be ignored are always ignored for future reasons. If you have been watching my videos from the beginning of this season, I said that Lorenzo left print on Zig's car the night he mistakenly shot him for Mecca and that this could trace back to Lorenzo if the police want to investigate the crime scene for prints and etc. Now this partial fingerprint match to that of Lorenzo was definitely got from the car Mecca gave to Zeke. Now the reason it's partial thumb print is because there were multiple prints on the door handle from Zeke as a result of opening and closing the car. And so Lorenzo's thumb print was found partially because of him opening Zeke's car with his bare hands without gloves. Send me a copy of the partial fingerprint report. That's it. Now, having said that, let's focus on Monet's mistake when framing Whitman. Now, Diana did a clean job by making Whitman believe she was helping him get Monet. Only that if Whitman had a recorder on him, things would get bad for Diana. But for now, Diana did a clean job. Now, if they will have to investigate what a suspended cop is doing at the Tahada family's house and match the story of Diana and Monet to Whitman's body, this is how big Monet could find herself in trouble. Now, according to Diana and Monet's story, Whitman broke into the house, attacked Monet, and hit her on the cheek. What? When 12 shows up, you tell him he broke in the house. I try to stop him. He attacked me and I popped him. Self-defense. <sighs> Do it! Now, if thorough investigation is done and autopsy is run on Whitman, they will find out that there wasn't any struggle and also he didn't punch Monet as she claimed. Because if he punched Monet like that, it will be evident on his hand that he did punch something with his hand. Now that we all know what happened, this can possibly start to raise questions and deeper investigation could be done. Unless no one cares about Whitman since he was on suspension. Now, we all know Jenny and Blanca will not stand for him after he disobeyed them severally. They warned him to stay off the Tahares and he refused, so he probably got what he deserved. You are not authorized to investigate Monet Tahada, is that understood? But then, who can possibly stand for Whitman now that he's dead? Possibly the person who forwarded the report about Lorenzo's partial fingerprint match. Maybe he can bring this information to the table and things will make sense to Jenny and Blanca that Whitman was actually doing a great job. Now let me know what you think in the comment section about this and how Monet just left space for possible investigation. Now still on the Tahares, Monet just found out that Lorenzo's print was at the crime scene. The irony of the whole thing is that she found this out after Kane decided to forgive Lorenzo and keep his secret. My bad, how I did you? I'm good. The secret is safe with me. Now, I don't know what Lorenzo would think about Kane if Monet approached him with the truth, but we all know Kane was honest with Lorenzo after he saved him from that bullet. Now, in my last video, I stated that Whitman just gave Monet a big clue on how Zig died and the circumstances, where Whitman said he assumed Zig caught a bullet that was meant for Dante's spear. Now, if Monet is smart to remember this statement by Whitman, she can have a definite conclusion that only Lorenzo will be interested in killing Mecca 
and by so doing, he shot her son in the process. Then Monet would put two together and remember Lorenzo came home even late that night. She would then realize Kane and his father brought her the guap guy as Zeke's killer. To be sure on her theories, she will ask Tariq to look into the guap guy that she killed. Tariq will find her the right answer that the guap guy she killed had nothing to do with Zeke's death. Now, if she matches this report from Tariq to Whitman's statement about Zeke catching bullets that was meant for Dante, this will give Monet the final ticket to conclude that Lorenzo was the one who killed Zeke. She will realize Kane knew about it. That's how come he had him, Lorenzo, in his pocket and that's why he was ordering him around. Monet will finally know Lorenzo killed Zeke thinking he was killing Mecca and I believe she will confront him directly and this won't go well for Lorenzo. Now, don't forget Norma is still looking for Mecca's killer. Monet might sacrifice Lorenzo for herself as a fair trade so she will not be hunted by Norma. Now, let me know what you also think in the comment section as well. Now, moving on to Cooper Sachs. So Sachs is on his own agenda here and I believe from now he's going to play both Jenny and Davis to his advantage. There is no way Sachs is going to risk his life because of sex that he hardly gets from Jenny. Her actions alone shows that she's up to something and she's hiding something big and I trust Sachs to uncover her soon. But now in the meantime, Sax needs David to trust him so he's going to get you out. Sax also needs to be sure on Jenny if she is real with him or not so he will be telling her moves to uncover her secret. Jenny thinks she plays smart by leading him to an old partner but Sax knows she's hiding something more than Blanca. Now Sax took a picture of this number from Jenny's other phone that she claimed is for CI calls thereby giving Sax an idea that he is not her only CI. So I believe Sax is going to trace this caller, possibly call the number until he gets to know the person behind the number, which I believe is Lauren. He will investigate and find out Jenny is hiding Lauren. Now, if I am Sax, I'll simply follow Jenny straight to where she has been hiding Lauren to uncover the truth myself. I also think that if Sax finds out that Lauren is alive, you possibly meet up with her. Like in this scene I spoke about in my earlier videos, I believe Lauren was with Sax here. I don't know about you, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, if Sax uncovers Jenny, he'll be torn between trusting Davis or Jenny. So at that point, Sax will not betray Davis as quickly as Jenny expected. Now, what can Davis hold against Sax to be able to control him? You all remember when Sax was at truth in an attempt to kill Ghost, right? Tariq still has that evidence on Sax that he was at truth the night his father was killed. Until now, no one has really been convicted as James St. Patrick's killer. If Davis feels threatened by Sax and needs some evidence or decked on Sax, Tariq can be of a great help to save Davis and control Sax like King did to Lorenzo. So if Sax knows that a lying lawyer like Davis has such information about him at truth in an attempt to shoot Ghost, he will not come out of it should he make it public and Tariq as a witness. So if the narrative goes this way, Davis can control Sax for a while. Let me know what you also think in the comment section. Now, before I move on, I want to highlight something about this guy quickly to you. I'm preparing a theory around him in the next video soon. Now, this guy we see here was referred to as Junior by Angela and Paz. Angela's nephew, Paz's son in the OG power. Now, he works with the DEA and as to why he's brought back to the scene, I'll share my theory with you very soon in my next video. Now, moving on to Blanca. Blanca CI survived the shot and he has some evidence on him that will put Braden and Lorenzo in serious trouble should Blanca get hold of his phone. Now talking about CI, this guy Salim needs to be watched. I don't know about you but he seems to be asking some type of questions that makes him suspicious. First, he started googling Diana, now he's telling her to cut ties with her family for her own good and talking about seeing her running errands for her father, etc. He can potentially be a CI trying to get his head into the Tahares. But then let me know what you also think about this Salim guy in the comment section. Now, Ken finding out if he did Lauren was a smart move to play with people's mind. I can see that Ken is becoming a master of psychology and how he reads between the lines. Some traits he might have picked up from Mecca. Just that this will go wrong for Braden because if he will start suspecting Braden as a weak link and will not trust him again, this could also be the beginning of division among them. Now, Lauren's information puts cameras at the rooftop and cause perfect will be compromised like I said in my last video. And I think they will see Efe and start chasing her for questioning. Maybe that was why she was running away from the police in the trailer they shared. Now, question is, could this give them a clue that Lauren is alive? 
Because apart from everyone else, it's only Lauren who knows the spot. So who could call the cops on the spot for cameras to be installed there? Will Efe assume it could be Braden who snitched, just like she thinks he told Kane what happened? Will Efe start antagonizing Braden to Tariq as the untrustworthy one? And could it be the starting point of Tariq and Braden fighting? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Now, still on the subject. Jenny lied to Blanca on an information Lauren gave her about the rooftop. You go, I'm going to focus on this new tip I just got from Saks. Tariq, he said, is known to visit a rooftop location on the Stansfield campus. I'll get an agent to mount cameras and begin surveillance. Now, Blanca may speak to Saks on that, possibly in a form of giving him some compliments about the rooftop tip. And he will become confused because he never said anything to Jenny about the rooftop at Stansfield. Now, this will make Saks open a personal investigation on Jenny. Then trace the number he snapped on her phone and then discover Lauren is alive. Let me know what you think in the comment section about the happenings in episode 4 so far. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn your notification bell to get notified anytime I drop next video. Like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.